Hey, this is the uh, re-kitted, partially re-kitted hot water 16 on 15 meters with an S9 signal as measured by my tiny SA here. I uh, set it up for minus 73 dBm just to see what an S9 sounded like and this is what it sounds like. So, uh, plenty of volume there. Now let's click in some attenuation and see what happens. Uh, hang on a second. Okay, I'm going to take it down to one microvolt. One microvolt, which is the, this is 50 microvolts. I'm going to take it down to one microvolt. This is what the uh, spec is. I'm not measuring the output, so I can't do noise ratio and all that stuff, but just to see if I can hear it. So. If I click in 34 dB of attenuation, there's 20, 34. That's one microvolt. I've got to turn the audio up to hear it, but it's there. And certainly a workable signal if there's no QRM in the band's quiet. So not too bad, not too bad. Uh, let me try one more test here, hang on. Okay, back to S9. Now I'm going to go for a half a microvolt. That's 40 dB extra of attenuation. And there's a half a microvolt. You can hear it. Not deadly strong. Uh, it's there. So that's what? That's minus 113 dBm uh, for a half a microvolt at 50 ohms. Sensitive enough, I'd say, for, you know, the type of rig it is. I uh, heard a couple JAs on uh, the other night on 15 CW about uh, 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Anyway, I'm satisfied. I think the uh, sensitivity is good enough on 15. No additional modifications required. Keep tinkering, everybody. This is a fun little project. I'll see you all later. Okay, here's what it looks like on the K3. This is the S9 signal, uh, minus 73 dBm. And the first thing we did, um, or that I did, was uh, dial in 34 dB of attenuation to get us to uh, 1 microvolt here. So let me do that real quick. 34 dB and you can see the signal level dropped on the pan adapter and also hear the level drop so that's one microvolt and the other one um, for comparison purposes was uh, half a microvolt so let me dial that in um, let's see Take that 34 dB out. Back to S9. Dial in 40 dB. That's a half a microvolt right there. Um, the signal that I measured um, down uh, even lower than that was not copyable on the 16. So. Uh, for example, if I kick in another 10 dB from here, there was no copy on the uh, 16 at all, not a trace of it. So let me kick in another 10 dB. And of course, not a fair comparison, obviously, but the K3 still hears that pretty easily. Um, in fact, we could even go a little bit lower. Uh, anyway. You get the point. So back to the show. By the way, here's just a little more closer detail on how I set this up. And I, you know, it's not lab accurate, but I have a signal generator here with a uh, pretty nice step attenuator from a very expensive piece of equipment uh, on top of it. 
and I, I have calibrated it so that S9 or 50 microvolts, if I set the output to the signal generator to 100 millivolts and I add in 51 dB from the step attenuator, it gives me an S9 signal at 50 ohms on the uh, tiny SA at the frequency that uh, I was using to test, 21.020. So that's, uh, I just unplugged that cable there and plugged it into the uh, hot water 16. So if I, uh, for example, if I go down to a half a microvolt, it's going to be down into the noise on this particular cheap little spectrum analyzer. But I'm going to click in 40 dB of attenuation here. Here we go. And it's gone. And if I bring it back. There it is. I don't know, if you probably can't read that, but it says minus uh, 72.6 dBm uh, for an S9 signal. Anyway, that's, uh, you know, not perfect uh, method here, but uh, close enough to give me an idea if it's close to meeting spec or not, aside from just the old ear test. Anyway, thought I'd add that in. See you all later. Keep tinkering. Everybody. Oh, by the way, one handy thing that uh, I used was this uh, signal level conversion chart which comes from a very fine company up in uh, northwestern Pennsylvania. And uh, this is one of the handiest little things they ever produced. <laughs> See you all later. Keep tinkering.